Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We're going to have a great show today. Our guest, Dr. Terry Hauser. Dr. Hauser is the Smithfield Chair of Meat Science Extension here at Iowa State University. We're going to talk about breaking down the beef carcass, some of the things that are going on with meat science. Just going to be a great show, so stay tuned. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do, every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed captioning is brought to you by ProFusion Drench for Beef Cattle, a no prescription, no needle supplement. To learn more, go to zenpro.com. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. Look who we got here, Dr. Terry Hauser. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Dan, for having me. It is awesome to have Dr. Hauser. He's an associate prof here in the Department of Animal Science at Iowa State University, and he is the Smithfield Chair of Meat Science Extension. And um, when we start to talk about people that are in it for the right reason, great teacher, great extension specialist, um, you know, Dr. Hauser is the best. So we're glad to have you. Well, thank you for those accolades. That's that's nice, <laughs> for sure. Well, we're going to talk about uh, the beef carcass. Yes. And and uh, let's just kind of start out with you know some of the generalities and things that we're we're seeing as uh, you know as 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 we've changed from selling live cattle to selling them on the carcass basis and and uh, you know some of the grids and different things have kind of changed what is going yep. into the plant and what's coming out of the plant. Yep. Yeah, I think we have a, a real great story in the beef industry. I know there's been much made of how we're pricing cattle now and how, how, how it's fair to the producer or the packer, but I think we got to go back and realize that we've made great strides since the 80s. Our, our cattle are, are grading much better than they have. Historically, we have some really premium programs such as Certified Angus Beef and others that have really put a lot of dollars back in producers' products in general because we have a very robust demand uh, with our beef products right now. So we're in a great position. Uh, part of that is because the national cow herd has changed uh, as far as genetics. Yep. And uh, it's amazing. Uh, we have numbers just from this week. Uh, we're, we're grading about 9% prime across the country, in some regions up to 15%. Um, and we've got a very, a, a very high number of choice cattle uh, that are coming through. And what packers tell me is that there is just an unquenchable thirst for prime product uh, from consumers. And so, so whether COVID may, made this uh, more, more apparent than it, than it was, we have a lot of people that are demanding high quality beef. And so in the U.S. where we grain feed cattle, uh, we're in an excellent position uh, moving forward, not only domestically, but also serving our international partners uh, with that high quality product. Yep. And then to get to that high quality product, we're feeding them a little bigger. Yes, we are. So what has happened with like carcass size and, and <clears throat> things to that nature? We've had linear increases in carcass weight uh, for many years. Uh, that does not seem to be slowing down, uh, even in the in the time period of high corn prices. But our average carcass weights now are, are running in the 900 pound uh, range. Uh, you know, 15, 20 years ago, we thought 900 pound cattle were huge. Yeah, those were uh, heavies. Yeah, in in a plant, and uh, 
we even used to dock cattle, you know, over 900 or 950. Now, uh, I don't believe that too many people are docking them until they're over 1,100 pounds. And so the genetics uh, keep getting our cattle larger uh, based off of selecting for weaning weight and yearling weight. And so that's going to translate into bigger carcasses. Uh, the cattle are just larger when they finish. And uh, as, a, as a result of that, we have some awful big cuts that are coming off of these cattle and something that the meat industry will deal with for the foreseeable future. Yep. Well, let's take a break. And when we come back, let's kind of break that carcass down into some primals. Then we'll get into some of those issues. This is going to be a great show, folks. This is what we produce. We're going to talk about the beef carcass. We've got Dr. Terry Hauser here at Iowa State University. More with him after these messages. If you miss caregiver camp this year, don't worry. We'll have more camps in 2022 at Knopfsinger Ranch in Binkelman, Nebraska. The camp is an opportunity for new and veteran employees to receive one-on-one -on -one instruction in a relaxed environment from Dr. Tom Knopfsinger, Dr. Kip Lucasavage, and Ted Howard on cattle handling, horsemanship, animal health, disease detection, and team interaction. At Caregiver Camp, people learn how to grow, how to trust, and open lines of contact between animals and humans. These principles will allow you to build relationships with your own livestock and team. For more information and future dates, visit our events page at packdvms.com. Innovative low-stress cattle handling equipment is key to efficiency and safety. At Daniels Manufacturing Company, we design systems using the best materials. We work with top producers from all over the world who use Daniels products on their operations. We concentrate on quality, prioritizing the safety of the animals and their handlers. Each product is carefully crafted and inspected to ensure your system will last for many years. Whether your operation is small or large, Daniels Manufacturing Company can design a facility to meet your needs. Visit us online or call to see how we can improve your cattle handling facility. Producers know stress costs money. It puts their cattle at greater risk of illness and can be a substantial drain on animal performance. That's why ZenPro developed ProFusion Drench for Beef Cattle. Formulated with ZimPro's patented trace mineral technology, ProFusion Drench is a no-script, no-needle performance supplement proven to rapidly replenish essential nutrients lost during times of stress. For optimal results, use ProFusion Drench with ZimPro Performance Minerals in feed as part of a complete nutrition program. To learn more, go to ZimPro.com. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Terry Hauser here at Iowa State University where Dr. Hauser is an associate professor in the Department of Animal Science he runs as is the lead professor for our meats lab, and he is the Smithfield Chair in Meat Science Extension. And um, we're talking about the beef carcass, and I thought it'd be fun because you know we, as beef producers, you know I sit there, I grow one, I ship it, I eat it, but there's kind of that fuzzy area between I ship it and I eat it. Um, besides, you know, so what are some of the primals? Like, what are the okay. big chunks, and what comes out of them? So, so we'll talk about the, the big primals, the four main primals in a beef carcass, and, we, and we're going to start from the, the, the hind end or the, or the top, if we were looking on a, on a rail, and we're going to start with the round. Uh, we, get, we have a lot of our carcass weight in the round, which would be the, the hind, hind limb of the animal. Uh, we're going to get things like uh, top round roasts or, uh, or uh, maybe like a rump roast, uh, those kind of products. Uh, that round has been traditionally pretty hard to merchandise as we change or as our consumers change and they want more steaks uh, we all want more steaks uh, that one uh, those cuts require uh, different cooking methods to to make them more tender what's what's pretty cool though is we're seeing a lot of that product go into products like jerky and uh, jerky is one of the fastest growing segments we have in the beef industry so that's that's pretty cool that we're adding value to that cut uh, so we start with a round. Uh, we get into our middle meats as we as we go down the back. Uh, our loin, our wholesale loin, is broke up into two pieces. One of those would be the uh, short loin. Yep. That's where we're going to get our, our t bones, our porterhouses, 
our uh, New York strips, um, and then our sirloin. Our sirloin is where we're going to get our top sirloin steaks. And of course, the tenderloin lays underneath the entire loin. Right. And so th this, this uh, particular primal is, is, has significant value uh, to the beef carcass, second only uh, to the rib. And that's where we would go next as we go down the carcass, we go into the rib. Uh, that's cut between the fifth and sixth ribs in the, in the 12th and 13th rib. It often carries the uh, economic uh, weight of, of the carcass uh, as, is it, as it is right now. Uh, ribs are uh, very expensive. We will make ribeye steaks. Yep. Uh, we'll make our holiday favorite prime rib out of that cut. And uh, so that's, that's actually my favorite, Dr. Dan. That's, I love a ribeye steak. And Me so, too. yeah, you can't, you can't beat yeah. that deal. <laughs> um, we work our way down into an, another one of our larger cuts, which is the chuck. Yep. Um, that's in the shoulder. Yes. Yep. And, uh, and that, that cut has again been uh, fairly hard to merchandise here. Uh, but there's been research done by the Cattlemen's Association uh, that has shown us that there is some value in that chuck. And so you're seeing more of those cuts uh, out of the chuck, such as a chuck eye. Uh, we also get into the flat iron steak, the petite tender, um, the Denver cut, those kind of things. So um, it is, you know, again, uh, historically been lower, lower uh, the priced, but um, it is increasing in value as we see this carcass uh, go up in, in cost. Now, in the chuck, historically, we, we make a lot of roasts out of that chuck. Yep. Uh, one of my favorites is a chuck pot roast. Um, it's, it's always good. And so... Uh, we cook it a couple hours and it's, and it's fairly tender. As we move uh, to the front, uh, to the bottom part of the front of the carcass, we get to the brisket. Yep. Uh, that's another success story. Briskets used to, they almost gave them away. They ground them. Now a uh, brisket is fairly expensive when you go to buy it <laughs> and uh, very popular, right? Yep. Uh, we, we see it all over uh, in, even in the upper Midwest. So uh, we have the brisket, uh, then we get into uh, around the, uh, the middle part of the animal, we get the short plate. Um, that has some export value uh, for us, uh, but uh, it also um, is generally used as trim. And then finally we follow that up with the flank and we, we have significant uh, uh, use there. That's awesome. Folks, there is so much to learn about this beef carcass. When we come back, as Dr. Hauser has explained to me, we're going to talk about how the bigger carcass influences these, these cuts and some of the issues and opportunities that are coming for us in the beef industry right after these messages. Time is money on the farm, and your cows are less productive when they're stressed. The Alertus on-farm test from IDEX allows you to quickly test cow side and identify open or pregnant cows within minutes on your schedule in the parlor, barn, or chute. It's more efficient for your farm, very simple to use, and puts you in control. With minimal training and reliable, fast results, sample-based pregnancy testing is better for beef and dairy producers. Learn more at IDEX.com slash DocTalk. Innovative low-stress cattle handling equipment is key to efficiency and safety. At Daniels Manufacturing Company, we design systems using the best materials. We work with top producers from all over the world who use Daniels products on their operations. We concentrate on quality, prioritizing the safety of the animals and their handlers. Each product is carefully crafted and inspected to ensure your system will last for many years. Whether your operation is small or large, Daniels Manufacturing Company can design a facility to meet your needs. Visit us online or call to see how we can improve your cattle handling facility. If you miss caregiver camp this year, don't worry. We'll have more camps in 2022 at Knopfsinger Ranch in Benkelman, Nebraska. The camp is an opportunity for new and veteran employees to receive one-on-one -on -one instruction in a relaxed environment from Dr. Tom Knopfsinger, Dr. Kip Lucasavage, and Ted Howard on cattle handling, horsemanship, animal health, disease detection, and team interaction. At Caregiver Camp, people learn how to grow, how to trust, and open lines of contact between animals and humans. These principles will allow you to build relationships with your own livestock and team. For more information and future dates, visit our events page at packdvms.com. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. 
Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan here with Dr. Terry Hauser. And Dr. Hauser has a cool honor in, as he is the Smithfield Chair in Meat Science Extension. He does short courses in our meats labs, fresh meats, processed meats. People from all around the world come to Iowa State University to learn from him, from our experts here in meat science. One of the best meat science departments that, uh, the best, Dan. That's right. The best uh, meat science department. I'd agree. So. And, uh, just, and it all starts with people. And uh, Dr. Hauser is good people. Oh, thank and you. so as we talk about this, so, you know, we're, we're sitting here. We got a bigger carcass. Yep. We got the same primals, the same subprimals, the same everything. It's, it can cause us some issues. Yes, it can. Um, probably the biggest, the biggest issue that we see is our, our plate costs. Yep. Uh, when we get these cattle really big, and, and, and we'll use ribeyes for example, uh, when we get these ribeyes big, uh, let's say a 16 inch ribeye, uh, you roughly you roughly add an ounce to that steak for every inch size you go up uh, with ribeye area. And so uh, it makes it very challenging with the prices that we have for a restaurant to put a ribeye on a plate that's cut you know, thick enough to make it a good eating experience uh, economically. So. Um, I, I think we'll see some of these cuts. Uh, we're going to work on how to fabricate them differently, especially out of the middle meats. Uh, now, now, people will often say, well, yeah, we may have big ribeyes, but we can't get that tenderloin too big. Uh, it's, it's okay when it gets too large. So uh, we don't, you know, there's some challenges there, yeah. but it's not all a bad thing when we get them bigger. Um, will what we, will we start, on, is there the chance that we would start cutting these things different like take the lip off the ribeye I've heard I mean yeah. I've heard people saying you know maybe we need to reevaluate how we yep uh, the lip on a ribeye is the, the the tail or the fat on the yeah. bottom and you're seeing a lot of people cut that off now and that's to get uh, that that portion it's size my favorite down. Part. it's the best part yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so yeah that's a challenge because when we cut that thing off we got to mark the rest of the product up um, so we will, I think you will see that as cattle continue to get bigger. One of the big issues with those large ribeyes though is many of our branded beef programs have a 16 inch ribeye cap uh -oh. uh, as far as getting those in the supply. And so uh, we'll see what happens with that um, as, as we go down the road here because obviously our branded beef programs have been very important uh, for beef demand. Uh, they will probably modify those specs or figure out how to cut those differently, yep. okay? Uh, also with now that we we say that there is some benefits to getting larger cattle because we have some other cuts that maybe we couldn't merchandise before because the product was too small now all of a sudden we have bigger cuts um, if we use the flat iron out of the at the shoulder or out of the chuck that's a great example the terrace major uh, or the or the petite tender as it's known is another great example and of course the tenderloin you know those could those could be huge and we could still market those so there there is opportunity uh, when we get the cattle bigger but but certainly the ribs uh, are a challenge uh, but we're still selling them yeah and so it still works I bought those Denver steaks out of your lab and man those are good yep they uh, are that is a that's a new one yeah and uh, you know just lots of opportunities that y'all are bringing to us and in, in the in the carcass yep and, and it should be noted that the, that the uh, NCBA and the Beef Checkoff have spent a lot of money on getting some of these cuts out of the carcass and helping merchandise those. And as we see uh, prices continue to increase, because we're gonna start seeing supply go down with our cattle, that's right. due to the drought and other things, yep. uh, we're gonna see more of these, these typically lower value cuts become more valuable and uh, more merchandisable. Yep, so that means more money back to the cattle feeder, right? We would hope so, Dan. We would hope so. That's the that's the, the concept. Yeah, uh, we have good fun here, um, folks. We're going to take a break, and we come back. We'll wrap up on the carcass, and we're going to talk about some cool things that the Iowa State Meats Lab and Dr. Hauser are doing to feed Iowans. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory. In the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprevo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprevo. Zuprevo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprevo for Merck Animal Health. Time is money on the farm, and your cows are less productive when they're stressed. 
The Alertus on-farm test from IDEX allows you to quickly test cow side and identify open or pregnant cows within minutes on your schedule in the parlor, barn, or chute. It's more efficient for your farm, very simple to use, and puts you in control. With minimal training and reliable, fast results, sample-based pregnancy testing is better for beef and dairy producers. Learn more at idex.com slash doctalk. Producers know stress costs money. It puts their cattle at greater risk of illness and can be a substantial drain on animal performance. That's why ZenPro developed ProFusion Drench for Beef Cattle. Formulated with ZimPro's patented trace mineral technology, ProFusion Drench is a no-script, no-needle performance supplement proven to rapidly replenish essential nutrients lost during times of stress. For optimal results, use ProFusion Drench with ZimPro Performance Minerals in feed as part of a complete nutrition program. To learn more, go to ZimPro.com. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Terry Hauser. We're at Iowa State University, and uh, Dr. Hauser is the Smithfield Chair in Meat Science Extension. Check it out on the internet. Students, if you want to go into meat science, and learn about meat science, this is the place to be. So, so come on to Ames, Iowa and, and jump in the meats lab with Dr. Hauser and, and get busy. Let's just do a little wrap up on the beef carcass. So uh, it's an exciting time to be in the beef industry. Uh, we got a product that everybody wants um, as, as we can look at the price tag on this product, which is, which is a wonderful spot to be. Uh, we've got some pretty big cattle uh, that we have some challenges with, but I think we can, we can manage those as we move forward. Um, and we have a, just a, a, a great set of uh, grading that we're getting out of these cattle. So our cattle are performing well. We got very robust demand. Um, we got some excellent new products coming out. So I, th I think we were, we're looking at some pretty good days to come. That's going to be awesome. It is exciting to be in the beef industry. Uh, let's, let's switch gears. And because I think that y'all are doing some cool things with the Beef Up Iowa mm -hmm. program, past the pork uh, program, but just kind of explain what, what y'all are doing to help feed Iowans. Yeah, so when COVID came along, uh, most everyone's aware that we had to sh shut some of our slaughter capacity in the U.S. And so we uh, worked with the uh, Department of Ag uh, to get a food bank, pr a program to service our food banks up and going here at Iowa State. And that program has been very successful. Um, I think it pointed out that we just have a lot of food insecure people here, Dan. Um, we also happen to have a derecho that, that cut off power here in Iowa for, for several weeks in some mm -hmm. areas. So we had folks that, that really, uh, really were in need. Um, and so our program, uh, we basically supply ground beef uh, and ground pork uh, to the food banks here in Iowa. Uh, we were able to hold those in, fr in frozen storage because many of our food banks don't really have a good way to hold that product. Uh, something that I learned out of that process is not everybody's got a, a freezer you can put 10,000 pounds of meat in, Dan. <laughs> so uh, that's that's been a really great thing here. Uh, a couple byproducts of that program is our students have just a, a, a much greater awareness that there's actually hungry people in the United States. Yeah. And so I think that's what we all need to remember. Yeah, that. But you've put out, I mean, how many? Oh, uh, we're pretty close to 400,000 pounds. And so uh, we can run about 12,000 pounds a day. And that's in the morning. So we have we have a very great crew here uh, with some with some pretty state of the art equipment that we're able to do that with. But the you know one of the great things is that we're showing students how to do this stuff. Yep. Um, we're currently just like every other industry, we're hurting for for new help. And uh, the best way to show somebody how to do something is is let them do it themselves. So this has been a great program, uh, you know, across the state. Uh, w with our own organization and uh, just can't well, say what that. I like what I liked about it too was this started the governor continues to yep. contribute money we have a governor that understands agriculture understands serving Iowans and 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 she has been involved herself lieutenant governor Greg has spearheaded this with with secretary Neg in in Idaho's and and working directly with Iowa State just, just like you said for our faculty and students it, it started with COVID and it's still going. Yeah, yeah, it's a real, it's a, it's a great success story. And, and something more of us needed, you know, we produce food, we don't really think about those in need. So it's a great program. 
Well, I appreciate all you do. It's great to work with you. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. Remember, if you want to see what we're doing, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Always work with your local veterinarian. And for Dr. Terry Hauser, I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here at Iowa State University. We'll see you down the road. Closed captioning is brought to you by ProFusion Drench for Beef Cattle, a no prescription, no needle supplement. To learn more, go to zenpro.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility.